بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن The month of Ramadan that the blessed Quran was sent down to our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is the month of fasting for the Muslims and fasting was prescribed for the Muslims in the second year of Hijrah and our beloved Prophet may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him fasted nine Ramadans in his life alayhi salatu wa salam before his death and we look at this month the month of fasting to the Muslims we see it as a month of happiness the Muslims before Ramadan comes they become happy and you'll see that the way of our pious predecessors the Salaf before us that they used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for six months that they would reach Ramadan and then pray six months after that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept from them their fasting and we see it's a month of happiness because the Muslims who had shortcomings during the year when they come together with their brothers in Islam they come together in the masjid and they're praying in the tarawih and they're reading more and more of the Quran and they're staying away from the actions which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're striving to do that which pleases Allah and staying away from the bad deeds that their iman it grows during this month and they become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they make up for the shortcomings they had in the past months even though a Muslim should be all the time uh, striving like this but this month is it's a special month where he increases in his acts of worship as our beloved Prophet used to do and he comes even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this blessed month it's also a month of happiness because when a Muslim sees his Muslim brothers coming back to uh, Islam and implementing Islam in their lives during this month, doing what is pleasing to Allah, staying away from that which is haram and displeasing, he sees that, Alhamdulillah, the Ummah, our Muslim nation is still in khair, they're still in good, and there's still, in, and he, uh, there's hope, inshallah, that the, the Muslims will come back to their religion and practice their religion in their life in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan as well, inshallah ta'ala. When we look at the month of Ramadan, we call it the month of happiness. Also, because it's the month of victories for the Muslims. Throughout Muslim Islamic history, we see that the major victories in Islamic history, it was during the month of Ramadan. And we're not going to go into detail because we have such a short time here on this episode. But I want to point out uh, that we gain from this as Muslims. The fact that this is the month of victories, that uh, it is a month of amal, a month of, of actually working and striving. Because unfortunately today, Ramadan has come to so many Muslims, or become to so many Muslims, a month of just taking it easy and relaxing, and they don't work very hard, and they put things off. So a real Muslim in Islam, you'll see that Islam, that the fasting does not affect the fact that we strive and we work very hard during this month as well as Muslims. So this is blessed month, we mentioned it's a, blessed, it's a month of happiness, it's a month of opportunities, as it will come now, inshallah. And it's a month of gifts where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given gifts to his ummah. These gifts, if you look at, for example, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Kulu amal ibn Adam lahu illa sawm fa innahu li wa ana adzibi. That all of the actions of the children of, of Adam are his except for fasting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing out in this hadith al Qudsi that the, 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 the reward for the, as it came in the other uh, narration, that all of the actions of the children of Adam, they will be for him except for the fasting. All of them, they, have, they will be doubled in the reward as it came in the hadith. And one hasana, one good deed will equal 10. إِلَى سَبَمِعَ as it came in the narration. Until 700 and he, uh, times more. So it shows you now that how the reward of all actions are doubled. Except for fasting, because the fasting itself, it has no limitation. It, it can go even more than 700 times more. So you'll see now in this hadith, these two narrations, that uh, we see the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in the hadith of Qudsi, and in the importance of the, of the ajr, the great reward you get for fasting, that the reward for it, it's unlimited. Secondly, when we talk about the gifts that a Muslim receives in Ramadan, this is the month of opportunity, a month of opportunity to get his sins forgiven. And it came in three different ahadith, three different ahadith, that you have three opportunities, three chances to get all of your sins forgiven during the month of Ramadan. The first of these, as it came in the hadith of the Prophet that whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of Iman, through faith, uh, that he wants the ajr, he wants the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that his past sins will be forgiven. And it's important we point out here when the, Allah says, when the, when the Prophet says that his past sins will be forgiven, 
that this means, as it came in the other hadith, that the Juma to the Juma and Ramadan to Ramadan, that, in, uh, that they are uh, forgiveness of the sins that come between them, Majtunib al Kabair, that it's not the major sins. So these are the minor sins, and also the major sins, obviously, if he repents from them, but if he doesn't repent from the major sins, it won't be forgiven. The point is that you have the opportunity during this month to get all of your sins forgiven through fasting the month of Ramadan. The second chance is through the Qiyam, through the prayer, which means the Tarawih during the month of Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man qama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhanbihi. That whoever stands in prayer during the month of Ramadan through faith and hoping for the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that he will uh, have all of his past sins forgiven. A third opportunity or a third chance is the other hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانٍ وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ That whoever stands during the night of Qadr, the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr, that he will also have, or through iman and through ihtisab, wanting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he will have also his past sins forgiven. And another hadith, another gift which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us during this month is the night of the decree, Laylatul Qadr itself, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that it's khayr min alf shahr in the Qur'an, that it's better than 1,000 months. So now reflect on this. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the opportunity of, uh, an, uh, to have a, a one night, one night of worship that is better than 1,000 months, subhanAllah, what a gift it is from Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, as it came in another hadith, that every night and every day there will be utaqa min an nar that people will be freed from the hellfire, meaning they have their sins forgiven, inshallah, and that they will be freed from the hellfire in the hereafter. May Allah grant us all that, inshallah ta'ala. And fifthly, we'll mention a fifth gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the Muslims during the month of Ramadan, and that's through fasting in general, in Ramadan and other than Ramadan. That the people who are fasting, they have a special door that to enter the paradise called a riyan. And nobody will enter this door except for the people who are the, fa the, the fasting ones. May Allah grant us all this success, inshallah ta'ala. We ask ourselves at the beginning of Ramadan, why do we fast? What do we hope to gain from our fast as Muslims? And we see that it's enough for us, alhamdulillah, that Allah has prescribed for us the fasting and order us to fast. And then we say, وَأَطَعْنَا, that we hear and we obey. But if we want to look into the hikam, the wisdoms behind the fasting, the fawa'id, the benefits that we gain from it, we will see that they are countless. And before we go on to the fawa'id and the benefits, we'll mention briefly if we were to look into some of the, what we gain from the verse itself, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, from 182 to 185, when he's talking about fasting, and he's talking about, we see we can, some of the things we can gain and why we are fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum as salam Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, Kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls us in the name of our faith as believers. And he says, Kutiba alaykum as siyam it has been prescribed for you. So now we see that it's wajib, it's compulsory upon the Muslim to fast this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out something to the Muslims. كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ That even those before us from the other religions, from the Christians and Jews, and those who came before them as well, all of the past nations, they used to fast as well. So all nations had fasting. Perhaps the, how they fasted was different, but all of the prophets, they came with fasting to their nations. And then something very important, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out at the end of the ayah. What do we hope to gain from this fast? And one of, the, what is the, one of the main things and benefits that we gain from this fast, he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That perhaps you will gain the taqwa. You will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will fill your heart with a taqwa. And a taqwa, there's different uh, definitions that the scholars of Islam gave for a taqwa. But perhaps one of the easiest ones, it is doing that which you are ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from that which you have been forbidden from. This is the easiest definition. And with somebody who does what Allah has told him to do and he stays away from what Allah has uh, told him to stay away from, then he's a person, inshallah, who has taqwa, who has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart and he is considered the pious person. And when we look throughout the Quran, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he always orders about taqwa and talks about taqwa. And if we were to look at <coughs> the verse in Surah Al-Hashr, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as one example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ittaqu Allah. Wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadiyun, wa ittaqu Allah. Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amanun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this verse. And when I was reflecting on this verse, 
uh, a little bit ago when I was thinking about the verses about taqwa. There's so many of them, but this is the, one of the verses that popped into my head. And when I reflect on this verse, I see, you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He calls us in the name of Iman in the beginning of the verse, and He, he orders us to have taqwa, to fear Allah. And then He says to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ That every soul should see that which He puts forth for tomorrow. And we look at the verse in the, in the 183 in Surah Al-Baqarah, the one that comes after the order of fasting, Allah mentions in the beginning of it, أَيَّامًا ma'dudat. That's a, a specific or a certain amount of days. It's not that many days, it's a short amount of time. So we, we benefit from this. One of the things also we gain from Ramadan is to benefit from our time and to strive in this life to be able to, inshallah, benefit from our time. And uh, this is one of the things that Ramadan reminds us of, is benefiting from our time and striving and thinking about what we're going to put forth for tomorrow from our deeds. The taqwa, as we mentioned, it goes on and on throughout the Qur'an. And at the end of this verse, we'll mention another benefit. We can benefit from fasting as well. Also mention this verse in Surah Al-Hashr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at the beginning, that He is well, at the end, excuse me, that He is well acquainted with that which we do. And if you look in the fasting, the muraqabah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is one of the main keys and one of the main benefits that we gain, that the fasting is teaching us to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. Because nobody knows if we're fasting or not, except for who? Except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now when you come to the masjid, you pray, or you give your zakat, if you give it in front of people, you go for hajj, all of this, the people know because they see you doing it. The fasting, people might think you're fasting, but you can go into a, a, a room and nobody sees you and you can drink and eat. But only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So the fasting is teaching you when you abstain from food and drink during the day to remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is always seeing and hearing what we're, saying, what we're doing in this life and it encourages us to always what, stay away from that which is haram and displeasing to Him and do that we are told to do. It's one of the, the, the great benefits we gain from the fasting. The spiritual benefits we gain from the fasting, we mentioned... So for example, from the ayah itself, the taqwa. And this is one of the main goals of the fasting, is for us to cleanse ourselves. Through this fast, this is what we're doing. We're cleansing ourselves spiritually. And all human beings are made up of body and soul. So we need to purify, as we need to be in, in good shape in our bodies, also we need to focus on purifying our hearts and our souls as well. Also from the benefits that we see for society. Now, how many of our brothers and sisters who are more uh, unfortunate than us, they don't have the money we have, they don't have the ability we have to, to buy the things and eat the things that we have. So when the people who have more money than them, they're fasting during the day and they feel the pains of hunger and they, the, the dryness of the thirst in their throats, they are reminded of their brothers and sisters in Islam who are less fortunate than them and this calls them to give sadaqah and to give charity to them and to help these people and obviously this encourages them also to do it all throughout the year, not just in Ramadan, but it's Ramadan and the fasting, it's a reminder of this. Also, subhanAllah, the health benefits that we gain from the fasting. Because unfortunately, we have become people who eat too much and all the time. So that's why our body weights continue to grow and grow and to expand. And the diseases we have in our society continue to spread. But through fasting, we actually give our bodies, we give our, st our stomachs <coughs> time to rest during this period. One month a year, alhamdulillah, the stomach gets to relax by be uh, being attacked three, with three heavy meals a day or more and snacks and what have you, alhamdulillah, so during this time, we benefit from the health benefits. And the doctors who are specialized in this field, they, they mention several uh, benefits for the fasting, the health benefits uh, for that. One of the great things we gain from fasting is that fasting, it teaches us sabr, it teaches us patience. And the life we live in, this world we live in, if you don't have patience, you will not be successful in your life. All of us are going to get angry, all of us are going to lose our tempers, all of it, we have difficult times, so the fasting is teaching us uh, how to have patience. And you see in the hadith where we're not allowed to swear or say bad things any, any time, but also it's more emphasis and put on it in Ramadan when you're fasting. So this can be your way in your life all throughout the year, inshallah ta'ala. Also one of the great things we need to remind ourselves as, as we're coming to Ramadan, and we're in Ramadan inshallah, is that Ramadan is actually uh, something greater than fasting. It's actually a school. You're entering a school where it's teaching you all these benefits that I mentioned all throughout this, this episode and how to benefit from your fasting. Uh, it's teaching you to uh, renew your relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you during, during the year you didn't have a, a good relationship with the Qur'an it's, it's calling you back to uh, read the Qur'an constantly it's calling you to pray your prayers in the masjid if you were not from the people who were doing that to strive to always pray in the masjid with the Muslims 
and we mentioned also is teaching you to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. There's so many benefits that the school of Ramadan teaches us. And this is what we want to do in this Ramadan is for all of us to focus on benefiting from this Ramadan and that what we gain from it. We want to have reflect what do we gain from our fast and it's so much. I actually recall in one lecture that I gave about the school of Ramadan, I mentioned more than 40 benefits just from the school of Ramadan itself and what the school of Ramadan is teaching us as Muslims. It's important we mention in this episode the hadith of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu the manner he used to fast and what did he used to do when he was fasting. So we're going to start from the beginning of the fast. If we look at the fast of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to focus on what we call suhoor, which is the pre-dawn meal. He would focus on the suhoor and he ordered us to have suhoor. Pay attention to this. Because he said to sahharu. This is an order from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not something just recommended. It's actually an order, so you must strive to do it if you are capable to do so. So he ordered us to have the suhoor. He said, فَإِنَّ فِي السُّحُورِ baraka," Because verily, in this pre-dawn meal, there is barakah, there is blessing. It puts barakah in your fast. It gives you strength to be strong during your fast. And also barakah in all aspects of your life because the Prophet ﷺ said it has barakah in it. Uh, it has blessings in it. Also from the benefits of, the, of this, we mentioned it will make you strong uh, during the day. And it will make the, fast, the, the length of the fasting shorter so you do not harm yourself in any ways. It's important to point out that suhoor itself, the pre-dawn meal, it's sunnah. And another sunnah is to make it as late as possible. And as it came in another hadith, what is the distance between the the, dhan, the last dhan and the time that the Prophet ﷺ would start his suhoor? He said about 50 ayat, about 50 verses, or 50 ayahs, 50 verses, the Prophet ﷺ, this is the time. So that shows it's actually a short amount of time. And unfortunately today, there's been a lot of ignorant Muslim masses who put on the calendars, uh, al-imsak, the time of imsak that you refrain. They put like 20 minutes before the Adhan al-Fajr. And this is directly against the sunnah of our beloved Prophet because the sunnah is to have your suhoor at this time. So you, you get to gain the benefits from it. So it's sunnah to have it as late as possible, even if it's right before the Adhan. But obviously if the Adhan is called, then we stop, inshallah, eating and drinking at that time. But up to the Adhan, it's the sunnah to eat and drink during this time. Also, if we look at the, how our Prophet ﷺ was, our beloved Prophet, may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, during Ramadan, they said he was from Ajwad al-Nas. He was, he was always generous, alayhi salatu wasalam. Very generous uh, man, alayhi salatu wasalam. But he always focused be, on being more generous during this month, alayhi salatu wasalam. He used to always focus on reading the Quran all throughout the year, but he would focus more in Ramadan. And Jibreel, Angel Jibreel, alayhi salam, would come to him and teach him the Quran during Ramadan. And during the last year of his life, alayhi salatu wasalam, he came to him twice uh, to teach him uh, the Quran and re revise with him, because obviously, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam, he's the one who brought the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he will review with him the Quran and it was reviewed with him twice completely in his last year before he died alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is why the Ramadan, we mentioned in the beginning of the episode, Shah Ramadan al unzila fi al-Quran. That the Quran was actually revealed during the month of Ramadan. So this is why Ramadan is known as the month of the Quran. This is why Muslims strive to finish the Quran as many times as possible. And you can finish it in tarawih and also reading by yourself, re hearing it when you're going to work in the car and your mp3 player or your tape or whatever you're listening to you try to re listen to as much Quran, read as much Quran uh, in the tarawih itself Alhamdulillah, the masajid we have now we have maybe two khatmas uh, we actually finish the Quran twice in the prayer during Ramadan and this is what a Muslim must do to strive to hear the Quran and benefit from the Quran as much as he can during the month of the Quran also the Prophet ﷺ would increase in all acts of worship more than he would in any other month because he wasn't somebody like, unfortunately, like a lot of us today, Ramadan Muslims, where we only put effort in Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ would make effort to strive all year around. However, he would make more emphasis on the acts of worship during Ramadan. And from these acts of worship are the tarawih, the tarawih prayers. And the Prophet ﷺ, he prayed for the first few days with his companions, but he was scared it would become compulsory upon them. So he started to pray by himself. But then, alhamdulillah, his companions came later and they joined together in congregation as Muslims in the masjid and pray together. So this is the sunnah of the Muslims from the time of the Prophet and then from the time of Umar radiallahu an, that they used to always pray together in the jama'ah, in the masjid as a major congregation. So this is what a Muslim should strive to do and not leave these prayers. Uh, and we see how it affects our iman when we come together as a Muslim. We see it with our Muslim brothers and we are in together in close ranks and we're all making dua together. The imam is making dua at the end and he's saying, uh, we're saying ameen. And then uh, the effect of hearing the entire Quran once or twice during this blessed month. So we need to focus on not missing any days during this year and the Ramadans to come if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He prolongs in our lives, inshallah ta'ala. 
the sunnah of futur, when you break your fast, it's important to know that the sunnah is to break it quickly, not to wait a little bit just in case. As soon as the adhan is called, you know it's for sure it's the correct adhan, you must strive to break your fast as quick as possible. Because ta'jil, to make, the, make it quick, is from the sunnah as it came in the hadith of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we must strive to break it quickly. Also, we must remind ourselves how did our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam break the fast? He would break it on, first of all, the rutab, which are the fresh dates. If he had the fresh dates available, he would break on the fresh dates. If he couldn't find the fresh dates, he would go to the second choice, which was the tamar, the regular dates. If he couldn't find this, then he would just drink a few sips of water, and then he would go to his prayer alayhi salatu wa salam. And this, I want to point out uh, two things here, at least, that the dates, it's been proven medically now that nothing, even any type of sweet or anything you have, it doesn't have the effects that dates have when you break your fast. So it's important we focus on the sunnah because they say your body level of strength, it goes down when you're fasting. And then when you start to eat, it gradually starts to work back up. It starts to work back up. When you're eating the dates, subhanAllah, they said it's the quickest way for it to go back up to its normal level, subhanAllah. So you see this from the hikmah, from the wisdom of our beloved Prophet, salam, breaking his fast with the dates. In addition, it's important that we point out when he said he would, the, the fresh dates, the dates or the water, and then he would get up والسلام, to go to his prayer. What do we do today? Unfortunately, we go against this sunnah. We go against this sunnah. We bring 20, 30 different types of food, uh, 10 different types of, of, of juice and drinks and what have you, and we sit down for the sufra to have our, our iftar, and we eat, and we eat, and we eat, and we eat. So what happens? First of all, medically, this is not, it's not, a, it's not good for you because you're actually, and you've been fasting for 12, 14 hours in a day, and then you start to cram your stomach. It's actually uh, harmful for you, for you, for you health-wise. But when you eat something light, like dates and water just, and you get up and pray, it gives your, your stomach now an opportunity to get prepared for what will come after the Salat. So this is the Sunnah and what we should focus on doing. Also, let's look at how it affects our prayer itself. How many of us, we eat so much, and mashallah, you see now that the, he starts to come, mashallah, he's like he's nine months pregnant, he's eating so much, mashallah. Then he wants to get up, to pray, he can't get up and pray. So he delays Maghrib, because his stomach is, is expanded so much. Audhu Billah. SubhanAllah. And then when he comes for Tarawih, he wants to pray at night, he's still carrying this, this big stomach around because he ate so much at Maghrib. So he doesn't benefit from his, his prayers during the night. He can't reflect because his stomach is so full. So we need to take it easy and follow the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu for this year, inshallah. And then, inshallah, we'll gradually eat after we come back from the Salat, inshallah. Also, what we need to focus on from the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, is making the dua, the supplication before the <coughs> iftar, before we break our fast. And as it came in the hadith that uh, this dua or the, this, this supplication, it will not be rejected. It will be accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the time we need to focus on making dua. How many people now we sit around, we talk, we have, we're playing with our mobile telephones during this blessed time. So we need to not waste our time this year, focus on benefiting from this time and making the dua for ourselves and for our Muslim uh, brothers around the world. Also from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is the i'tikaf during the last 10 days. He would focus on uh, leaving the world affairs and isolating himself in the masjid in i'tikaf. And he would also uh, not be uh, with his, his, his wife during these days in order to focus on the ibadah, on the worship, even more in the first, uh, in the, the first uh, 20 days. And the, look at the hikmah of this, when the Prophet would do this, because Layat al-Qadr, we mentioned in the beginning, that's better than 1,000 months. And whoever stands in prayer during this night, that all of his past sins will be forgiven. This is the month, this is the time during the last 10 days. So this is why we need to focus on the last 10 days on doing the acts of worship. Unfortunately, a lot of us fall into the traps of a shaitan where we uh, always, in the last 10 days, we're in the market. The souk, we're buying stuff for Eid and this. So I always tell the brothers to buy this stuff before this. Don't waste your time during the last 10 days. Even though I know the brothers who have the stores, they get mad at me if I say this. But we have to say what's more important is our iman and focusing on building our iman. And we can buy, alhamdulillah, from the stuff we need for Eid before the last 10 days. Because the last 10 days, are just should, we should focus solely on the worship during this day. And don't waste our time with the things that are not that important. Um, we're running out of time in this episode. And there's more things we have to talk about, about the ahkam of Siyam. Uh, one thing I will point out is that important we talk about the pillars of fasting itself. Everybody knows that fasting is withstanding from food and drink and what is the, like food and drink, the thing, or the things that break your fast in general, from the dawn until the dusk. And all Muslims say this, but there's another pillar which we forget to remind ourselves of, and it's ta'abud lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an act of worship. We need to constantly remind ourselves of this. And this is why they talk about the importance of the niyyah, or tabita niyyah, 
is that you have the niyyah before you fast the next day. Every night during Ramadan, you must have this niyyah in your heart that you're fasting the next day. When you get up for suhoor in the morning, obviously to eat before you're fasting, this also will show that you have the niyyah. And when you say the niyyah, you have the niyyah, it's in your heart, not on your tongue. You don't have to say, tomorrow I have intended on the 7th of Ramadan and 1431 or whatever that I'm going to fast this month. No. You just have it in your heart, the intention that you're going to be fasting the next day. This is very important. When we say that ta'abu lillah, that this fast is an act of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we want to run away from the people who have fallen into customs. Some people who don't even pray, subhanAllah. But when it comes to this, they fast because everybody else is fasting. You'll find that he's fasting and he doesn't benefit anything from his fast except for becoming hungry and thirsty because he forgets to remind himself that this is an act of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's important now as we end this episode that I advise my Muslim brothers and myself to focus on benefiting these days. It's as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَيَّامَ ma'dudat, A specific, a short amount of days that we must focus on benefiting from. And I always want to say, you need during Ramadan to have a schedule to see what you want to do, what you want to gain, how you're going to do it, so you do not waste these blessed days. And also, it's important, and this inshallah will end the episode with this, that you focus on learning the ahkam, the rulings of fasting, what breaks your fast, uh, when are you allowed to break your fast, uh, all of these things. What is the sunnah to do when you're fasting? What is it makruh, dislike to do when you're fasting? All of these things you need to focus on. And obviously we don't have the time in this short episode. So all of us must go and, buy the, uh, and read the books of the fiqh of our scholars to be able to know this, inshallah. And Allahu alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad.